This is Vance Algebra Concept Exam, uh, Concept 6 through 10 review. We're going to go ahead and solve the problems here for you. You can uh, fast forward, rewind, pause, whatever you need to do to help you uh, learn this material. You can watch it as many times as you like. In problem number one on probability, we're given a bag that contains five red marbles, five white marbles, and four blue marbles. The question asks us to find the probability of a red or a blue. So let's see what we can find out here. Let's see, we have a total of 14 marbles, 5, 5, and 4. And it's a good thing if we get a red or a blue. Well, there are 5 reds and there are 4 blues. So that can happen in 9 ways that we can get a red or a blue. So our probability for number 1 is 9 fourteenths. And we're done. Number 2 asks us to find the probability that when we spin the spinner, will land on a multiple of three or four. Well, let's just cruise through here and find out how many of these are actually multiples of three and and four. So uh, 24, definitely a multiple of three and four. 22, no. Uh, 54, not a multiple of four. 36 is a multiple of four and of three. 18, not a multiple of four. 10, not a multiple of four. 12 is a multiple of four and three. And 64 is not a multiple of three. So we just have the three numbers. So there are three ways to get a multiple of three and four, and there are eight total numbers we could land on. So our probability here is three eighths. Concept seven is about domain, range, etc. of functions. So uh, number three has a couple questions here. The first question is, is this a relation? And then after that, we're supposed to explain why we said yes or no. So this is just a yes or no question with an explanation. So let's scan through here. I see a negative two paired with zero, and I see a negative two paired with one. That means we do not have a function, so we're just gonna say no, this is not a function. And the reason is, is we have one domain value in this case, negative 2 is paired with two different range values. And we're good with that problem. While we're here, let's go ahead and uh, do number four. Number four gives me a function f of x and a function g of x and asks me to find f of one divided by f of four. To find f of one, I just need to find the f function and plug in one. To find g of four, I just need to find the g function and plug in four, and they're both provided for me here. So let's just do a little preliminary work here. What is f of one? f of one is four times 1 minus 2, or 4 times 1 is 4 minus 2 is 2. What is g of 4? Well, g of 4 is negative 2 times 4 minus 1. Negative 2 times 4 is negative 4, or excuse me, negative 8, minus 1 is negative 9. Now I just need to finish the problem. They wanted us to find f of 1 divided by g of 4. Well, I have f of 1 is 2, and I have g of 4 is negative 9, so I've got 2 divided by negative 9, which is the same as negative 2 ninths. Final answer. All right, number eight, we're supposed to write an equation in standard form of the equation that goes uh, through the point and has the slope that's given. We need to understand what standard form is. Standard form is ax plus by is equal to c. We also need to understand that when we're looking at standard form, the slope is always the opposite of a divided by b. We uh, we need to know that this a is the same value as this a. They're the, they're the exact same number. 
and this b is the same value as this number. They're the exact same number. And there's a little kind of a twist here. The sine of the slope and the sine of the operand between ax and by are opposites. So the slope is the opposite of a over b. That's where the opposite can show up in a nice standard form. So when they give us four thirds, they're giving us an a value with the four and a b value with a three. And by making it positive, they tell us there's a minus in between. So let's go ahead and write this out. Four thirds would tell me four x, and it would tell me b y. Actually, three y is what I really want to write there. Four thirds tells me four x and three y. And since my slope is positive, the operator in the middle has got to be negative, and that equals some value c, which I don't know yet. But I still have this x, y ordered pair that I haven't even touched yet. And I'm going to go ahead and touch that now. We're going to put the negative 1 in for x minus. We're going to put the negative 2 in for y. Why are we doing this? Well, because this point has to be on this line. That means when we plug in the point, it should be true. We should get a value over here that makes that true. So the value we get when we plug it in is the value that goes over here. 4 times negative 1 is negative 4 negative 3 times negative 2 is positive 6, negative 4 plus 6 is 2. And we have our equation of our line. Let's go ahead and box it up, our final answer. Number 6 asks us to graph the equation of a line, uh, negative 1 half x minus 2. The minus 2 is our y-intercept, so we'll go ahead and plot that on the y-axis. We'll go down to negative 2. We'll put a dot. And then we'll uh, use the slope of negative one half. Slope of negative one half says to drop one and run two. We'll do that, and then we'll try to draw a line through these points. And we have our line. Always start at the y-intercept, and then use the slope to find another point or two or three, and you've got a good equation of a line. Number seven asks us to find the equation of a line. In this case, we're going to go through 0, 6, and we're going to be perpendicular to uh, y equals negative 2x plus 1. We should know that perpendicular lines have slopes that are opposite reciprocals. So the slope that I'm looking for is not negative 2. It's the opposite reciprocal. So it will be positive, And if we flip the neg uh, 2 over, we get 1 half. So the slope is 1 half. So I need the equation of a line with a slope of 1 half and the point 0, 6. And isn't this fortunate? The point they gave me is actually a y-intercept. So I can go ahead and write the answer in slope-intercept form. I have a slope and an intercept. I can say y equals 1 half x plus 6. And we're done. All right, some questions that get a direct variation here. This uh, number eight says, determine whether y varies directly with x. That's a yes or no question. We need to answer yes or no. If it's yes, we need to write an equation. Only if it's yes. So let's see what we can find out here. If it's going to vary directly with x, then all the y divided by x values here would be the same. So if I take 5.4 and divide by 3, I get 1.8. If I take 12.7 and divide by 7, I get 1.8. 1, 4, 2, 9, and others. So this is uh, not a direct variation because these values aren't the same. These values would have to be the same for it to be a direct variation. So my answer is no, they're not the same. They don't have the same um, y over x value, which means there's not going to be a constant of variation here. Over here, let's just go ahead and do number 9. Determine whether y varies directly with x. If it does, find the constant of variation. Well, this one does not vary directly because we've got this 25 sitting here. This would have to be a zero in this form for this to be a direct variation. This is some. This will create some kind of intercept value that's not zero. So we're going to go ahead and say no. All direct variation lines have the form y equals kx. Y equals kx. If we see a plus b on the end here, that is not direct variation. And that's what this 25 is causing. OK, a couple more questions that deal with uh, varying directly. 
question number 10 says if y is 68 and x is negative 136 what is y when x is negative 104 well since we very directly we we know that y divided by x should equal y divided by x every time so we'll take a y uh, 68 and divide by the x that goes with it negative 136 and say that's the same as this unknown y divided by the x that goes with it negative 104 Let's go ahead and cross multiply. Or actually, actually, let's reduce the 68 and the 136 and uh, get those numbers knocked down. What do you know? That's 1 half, negative 1 half in this case. Negative 1 half is equal to y over negative 104. Now let's go ahead and cross multiply. So if we take y times 2, we get 2y. If we take negative 1 times negative 104, we get 104. And dividing by 2, y is the same as 52. So we've got an answer for number 10. Let's go ahead and do number 11 while we're sitting here. Number 11, uh, we got a direct proportion again. Olivia traveled 270 miles in 7.5 hours. How many miles? We don't know this one. Uh, did she travel in 2.5 hours? Well, since we have a direct proportion, we can set up a proportion. Let's go ahead and say... Uh, miles divided by hours is the same as miles which we don't know divided by hours and again let's cross multiply so m that's not m 7.5 m 7.5 times m is 7.5 m 7.5 m would equal 2.5 times 270 and then to isolate m we would divide by 7.5 so 2.5 times 270 divided by 7.5 that is 2.5 times 2 let's clear that out that didn't go in right 2.5 times 270 divided by 7.5 is the same as 90 There we go. All right, a couple of linear modeling questions here. We've got a balloon that takes off from a location that's 127 feet above sea level. It rises at 49 feet per minute. We're asked to write an equation to model the balloon's elevation h as a function of time t. We need to understand a few things here. We need to understand that when you see feet per minute, you're looking at a rate. And when you're looking at a rate, you're looking at a slope when we're dealing with um, linear equations. If we're modeling h, it's our equation should be h equals. As a function of t, we're going to have a t over here somewhere. The thing that's going to go in front of the t is the slope. We understand y equals mx plus b. It's just that we're replacing m and b to be h, or excuse me, y and x be h and t. m and b are getting replaced by values. In this case, 49 is the slope, so we're going to put a 49 right in front of the t. And then we've got a positive, because we're above sea level, 127. And there's our equation that models that balloon's height. All right, number 13, uh, probably the most complex problem on the test. Pro not probably, it is. Uh, cannery processed 1,725 pounds of strawberries in 6.5 hours. The cannery processed 2,160 pounds in 8 hours. Part A, write a linear equation to model the weight of strawberries S. We're modeling S processed in T hours. So if we're modeling S in T hours, we know it's S equals something with a T. Okay. So in order to write a linear equation, We've been trying to drill in our heads that whenever we need to write an equation of a line, we need a slope and we need a point. Well, they've given us two points here. Whether we realize that or not is another issue, but they have given us two points. We need to decide how we're going to write our points. Since we're modeling s as a function of t, they are t comma s points. Normally, we model uh, x as a function of y. So that's when we write y equals x. So that's the that's the order we're going in here. 
So my point would have to be time comma pounds. In this case, 6.5 hours and 1,725 pounds. And the other one is eight hours and 2,160 pounds. If I'm gonna find a slope and I have two points, I'm just gonna use the slope formula. We'll take y2, 2160 minus y1, 1725, divided by the second x minus the first x, x2 minus x1. That result is 290. So I have a slope of 290. I'll go ahead and fill that in because I know that. But I just, there should be a little more here though. And the little more is the y-intercept, we don't know it yet. So let's copy that down here, y equals, or s equals 290t plus some unknown y-intercept or b value. Let's go ahead and plug in a point for s and t. Let's use 8 and 2160, then we don't have to deal with decimals. So s2160 is an s value equals 290 times 8 plus b. Let's see, we're gonna to have to take 2160 and minus 290 times eight from it. The result there is negative 160, so B is negative 160. So this would be, have a B value of negative 160. That is done. S equals 290T minus 160. The only thing we have left to do is part B, which asks us to find then how many pounds of strawberries we'll be getting in seven hours. Well, you know it should be a little less than what we get in eight hours, right? And more than what we get in one thousand or in six and a half hours. So let's go ahead and make some room here and let's see if we can calculate that. In seven hours, S, the number of pounds of strawberries, would equal two ninety times seven minus one sixty. So we'll just punch up some buttons here. 290 times 7 minus 160 is the same as 1,870 pounds of strawberries. Let's see, that's more than 1725 and less than 2160. So it's in a ballpark range there.